Welcome to Lung Sounds Part 2. Let's identify abnormal breath sounds through clinical scenarios. I'll present the patient, we'll listen with a live audio lung sound, which will best be heard with some earbuds, and shortly after, we will discuss nursing interventions. If you missed my last video on Lung Sounds Part 1, I'll be sure to include the link below and in the description box. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. Beginning with scenario number one. So Mr. Smith is a 57 year old male admitted into the telemetry unit for uncontrolled hypertension with a history of asthma and diabetes. So I am doing my rounds and I observe that Mr. Smith is looking like he is having trouble breathing. My patient is alert and oriented times four. I ask him, how are you feeling Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith says, oh, not so good. His vitals are the following. His blood pressure is 130 over 60. His heart rate is 80, respiratory rate is 12, his temperature is 98.7, on room air he's setting 91% with a good waveform. So through a rapid assessment, I see my patient has nasal flaring and I observe intercostal retractions. I immediately apply the simple mask on my patient and connect it properly to administer 15 liters per minute of oxygen and make sure he is sitting straight up to help expand his lungs. I then listen to my patient's lungs. As I am listening to my patient's lung sound, I hear this. What I hear is a high-pitched, squeaky, musical sound. What is it? Is it A, ronchi? Is it B, wheezing? Is it C, strider? Or is it D, crackles? The answer is B, wheezing. So we know that Mr. Smith has a lot of mucus production. He has a history of asthma accompanied with active wheezing. So our focus will be respiratory. So we applied the simple mask and sat Mr. Smith straight up. Which prescriptions do you anticipate will help this patient? So my next step would be to look at my patient's medication list and I want to identify medications that are listed to help alleviate my patient's symptoms. So I see listed on my medication list is an albuterol in a nebulizer form. This medication will help relax smooth muscle. So I know this will help open up his airways and decrease the wheezing, the shortness of breath, or chest tightness. We can also page the team and request for an inhaled steroid inhaler if it's appropriate. Some examples could be Alvesco for the long-term maintenance. So we have listed loratadine, which is an antihistamine to help control secretions. So once we have achieved the SATs of greater than 94%, we can transition to a nasal cannula with humidifier at two to four liters per minute based on his O2 saturation. So to resummarize some nursing interventions, we wanna do the nebulizer treatment, which I will coordinate with RT. I'll administer loratadine to help control secretions. I'll apply nasal cannula two liters to four liters with humidifier and titrate to maintain SATs greater than 92%. I'll encourage my patient to cough up any mucus production if he can, and I also want to encourage him to use his incentive spirometer. So one hour has passed and I am going to reevaluate Mr. Smith and listen to his lungs. And I hear the following. So which lung sound did you identify? Was it A, bronchial, B, bronchovesicular, or C, vesicular? The answer is B, normal bronchovesicular lung sounds. So we're gonna recheck his vitals. His blood pressure is now 130 over 72, heart rate is 80, respiratory rate of 12, Oxygen saturation is 97% on two liters nasal cannulas with humidifier with plans to titrate down. Moving on to scenario number two. So Mr. Hope is a 78 year old male admitted to the medical surgical unit for acute cholecystitis, status post cholecystectomy. I go to assess Mr. Hope at 8 a.m. His current vitals are blood pressure 150 over 70, heart rate is 90, respiratory rate is 10, temperature 99, O2 saturation is 97% on room air and pain zero out of 10. His family reports patient is stoic and has a high pain tolerance. At 11 a.m., I reassess Mr. Hope. He is showing signs of respiratory distress and increased work of breathing. 
and I am assessing the patient, I notice that his oxygen saturation has dropped from like 97% to 91% while on room air. I immediately apply a simple mask on at 15 liters per minute and gather a set of vitals. His blood pressure is 140 over 72, heart rate is 110, respiratory rate of 15, his temperature is 101, so he's running a fever and his saturation is 91%. I then listen to Mr. Hope's lungs and hear the following. So what I hear is a high pitched popping sound at the end of inspiration and with this short duration sound of hair rubbing together. So what sound did you identify? Was it A, wheezing, B, strider, C, crackles, or D, plural friction rub? The answer is crackles. So let's dive in and better understand why this is occurring. So the patient just had surgery, status post cholecystectomy, which was removal of the gallbladder. The question is, how can this impact the respiratory system? So status post surgery, the patient will likely be in pain and have shallow breaths due to pain because it hurts to breathe. So naturally, Mr. Hope is stoic and is having shallow breaths due to pain. But this puts the patient at risk for developing atelectasis, which is a collapse of the alveoli. This is why the patient portrayed increased work of breathing and a drop in oxygen saturation from 97% to 91%. So clearly the RN needs to reinforce pain management status post-surgery through education. But there's more to it. So my question is, so what nursing actions and medications do you expect for the patient? So we want better pain management, but the patient is stoic. So from my experience, if the patient's stoic and the patient doesn't have a history of hypertension, if the blood pressure is elevated and they're telling me they're fine, I really don't believe it. This is where I'll use my nursing psychology and really work on educating the patient and family on how to better manage pain. Or when I am having them change positions and looking for facial grimaces, there's another tip for me that the patient's pain is not controlled. Some additional nursing actions are you can use or encourage the use of the incentive spirometer to help expand the alveoli because they're more bedridden. I'll have the patient change positions to help mobilize secretions. I'll help encourage them cough and splint the incision site. Also, early ambulation will help mobilize secretions and some medication options are like bronchodilators, antibiotics if appropriate. So after all of those interventions were completed, the RN will reassess the patient's lung sounds. So when I go to reassess the patient's lung sounds, what normal lung sound did you identify? Was it A, bronchial, B, bronchovesicular, or C, vesicular? The answer is C, normal vesicular lung sounds. Moving on to scenario number three. So Mr. Mundo is a 21-year-old male admitted for decannulation with reanastomosis from tracheal stenosis. So head and neck surgery are following the patient. The medical history is diabetes, seizures, status post traumatic brain injury from a motorcycle accident one year ago. So since then he has been unable to communicate. The plan is to decannulate to help the patient restore and initiate speech with aggressive speech therapy. So at 8 a.m. vitals are the following, blood pressure 110 over 72, heart rate is 76, respiratory rate of 12, oxygen saturation 97% on a face tent with a humidifier at 15 liters per minute with a temperature of 97. 9 a.m. vitals are the following, blood pressure 115 over 76, heart rate of 115, respiratory rate of 10, oxygen saturation 90% on face tent at 15 liters per minute. Assessing the patient, I notice that his head is hyperextended, which is not indicated, and we want to avoid hyperextension of the neck and use C-spine precautions. So I reposition the patient's neck and listen to the patient's lung sounds and hear the following. So what I hear is this constant crowing sound pitch that sounds musical. What lung sound did you identify? Is it A, plural friction rub, B, ronchi, C, strider, or D, crackles?
The answer is C, Strider. This can occur from partial larynx or tracheal obstruction or from inflammation or croup. So what medications and nursing actions do you anticipate the patient will need? So some interventions you want to consider is elevating the head of the bed. And with this type of procedure, you want to avoid hyperextending the neck and position in alignment to avoid obstruction of the larynx. You want to use a face tent with active humidification is key. And administration of corticosteroids per MD orders. And if no change, consider racemic epi with prompt evaluation from respiratory therapy and the healthcare provider or the medical doctor. So the RN reassess the patient and listen to the patient's airway and hears the following. What lung sound did you identify? Was it A, bronchial, B, bronchovesicular, or C, vesicular? The answer is A, normal bronchial breath sounds. So after administration of racemic epi from the RT, his oxygenation was restored with the oxygen saturation of 97%. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.